Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member, and members of the subcommittee uh, for the opportunity to testify this morning on this incredibly important topic, uh, international deforestation and climate change, particularly on Earth Day. I can think of no better way for all of us collectively to spend our time than to deal with this uh, very important issue. I'm testifying this morning on behalf of the World Wildlife Fund, uh, where I'm a senior fellow. Uh, in addition to uh, my work at WWF, I've had a longstanding interest in this issue, uh, dating back to my time as Deputy Secretary of Interior in the Clinton administration. Um, I'd like to say at the outset that WWF, uh, which of course has a broad mandate to protect biodiversity on this planet, uh, is very encouraged by the promising first steps the, that the international community is taking with regard to global deforestation. Uh, the uh, Bali discussions that Ambassador Eisenstadt just referenced uh, kick off, I think, a very, very strongly promising new chapter here. Uh, I should mention historically, as is discussed in my testimony, that WWF was quite skeptical back in Kyoto days, as the ambassador will confirm, about uh, the inclusion of forestry as part of the uh, Kyoto uh, Compact. Uh, we think times have changed, uh, that now that the industrial world is focused on reducing industrial emissions, that we have to also deal with deforestation, which is, uh, by all accounts, uh, uh, sub, uh, a, a responsible for, for at least 20% of global greenhouse gas emissions. We're also encouraged at w, w, WWF about um, the uh, Lieberman-Warner bill and the fact that it proposes in addition to a U.S.-based constraint on carbon emissions, it includes an international forestry title which recognizes that the U.S. needs to play a leadership role in reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation abroad. Um, however, uh, unlike conventional sources of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, deforestation and forest degradation present very difficult, multifaceted challenges that cannot be easily tackled. We think it's important to look at the root causes of deforestation and degradation uh, if we're going to really deal with this issue comprehensively. It's going to require the cooperation of governments who are losing their forestry resources. Importantly, it's going to require the uh, cooperation of the U.S. and our trading partners whose practices are influencing how forestry resources are being used. Uh, and the participation of ing indigenous peoples and others who are most impacted by land choices made in their homelands. Uh, as a result, we think that the, for the international discussions and U.S. legislation should focus first on promoting economic models that will address these root causes of deforestation and degradation, and which will involve the coordinated effort of the international community. That's one reason why the, the discussions made this morning about uh, Senator Luger's uh, uh, work on the Tropical Forest Conservation Act are absolutely apropos. We cannot look at, at establishing a credit market for uh, carbon from protected forests without looking at other tools that we can bring to the table to help protect forests, and certainly the Tropical Forest, uh, uh, Tropical forest Conservation Act is one. Another uh, which this committee also uh, is looking at, is amending the Lacey Act uh, to prohibit imports into the U.S. of timber products uh, comprised of illegal timber. Again, we can't look at this issue through blinders and, and assume that creating a credit market that will attempt to uh, protect forests will be enough to solve this problem without dealing with the realities that were highlighted in the New York Times on Saturday about illegal uh, logging in many of these countries. Uh, in that regard, I should mention uh, that, as you know, the World Bank has reported that uh, many tropical, deforest, uh, tropical uh, uh, forested countries are losing billions and billions of dollars from illegal uh, logging. Uh, these, are these are countries that typically outlaw this logging but don't have the institutional capability uh, 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 to, uh, to deal with it. Um, I'd like to... to uh, 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 finally, uh, I believe my time is up, uh, finally uh, e explain that we are very encouraged by the notion of using uh, carbon markets as a key element here to deal with uh, the deforestation efforts. But we, we need to put a warning sign out there. The deforestation 
issue presents special challenges. First, in terms of the local capacity of, of uh, developing countries to measure and monitor and validate uh, uh, the, the reductions that are needed if we're going to use these credits as though they were uh, emissions uh, reductions that that have compliance purposes that have compliance impacts in a U.S. based system, um, and secondly, we have to recognize the fact, in addition to this uh, problem of capacity, uh, we have to recognize the special challenges of measurement that we're going to hear from Professor Gurney about. Uh, this is a, a very difficult uh, area in which to precisely measure emissions reductions and the leakage issues, uh, the, the problem of, of potentially having deforestation simply move to another area. This is not something we can do on, on a project by project basis. Uh, with all of that, uh, we, uh, we think skepticism is important, but we also think optimism is essential. We have to solve this problem. We can solve this problem. It's going to take a concerted effort. The World Wildlife Fund uh, and many others in the conservation community look forward to working with this committee toward that end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Dr.